Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the 5-Minute Read Maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, will you go ahead and click a subscribe, and that way you will always know when I drop a new episode. Um, today we have a Read Repair Shop episode, Julie's Reads, um, <clears throat> give her a lot of trouble in the upper register. She needs them to be very, very easy to articulate on and to play. Uh, she doesn't want a lot of resistance, She so and she has built her reads for that purpose, and they do that, but uh, she also needs to be able to relax with her embouchure, and she can't do that because they're so finished and so over-finished that uh, they're not holding their own pitch up. So I did some experimenting, and I had a and a fail and a win. Um, so hopefully this feels helpful for you to watch as well. Hi, Julie. <clears throat> Thank you for sending these reads. They're super interesting, actually. So um, in your note, you said, I think my reads look more like a read than may they may ever have. I can get them to play. They work in the side of the mouth test okay. Uh, I noticed that the higher notes uh, start to have an almost brittle quality unless I cover a lot. And that leads me to begin biting to try to force my will on the read and get it to sound better. And this is what I want to get away from. And then you also mention that uh, you really need a read that is very quickly responsive and light. Like they feel terrific in my mouth actually, but the openings are very large looking compared to what I'm used to. And that, uh, and I can clearly see why that is the case. You've got a very well-defined W at the bottom of all of your scraping and a very strong spine that goes all the way through the heart. and. Actually, when, when what you describe is needing to have a read that is light and responsive and up to pitch, and that is perfectly clearly what you are building here uh, on purpose, and I salute that. Um, the strength of the spine helps to hold the read open. The You've left a strong spine in the middle of the heart and then scraped the channels, which is the trick that I use to reduce resistance while maintaining pitch. So I love that. I think it's exactly right. Um, and I can see that you've done a good job, a pretty good job, of leaving uh, material in the middle of your tips. Why then do these reeds feel unstable uh, up in the upper register and a little scary to you? Here's your read number two, I guess, and it's actually crowing a little bit low, I think. It's crowing about a B, and I feel that little instability in it as I play. It feels a little too open, it feels a little too unsafe. Like if I let go with my mouth, it's gonna go. Right, the strong opening that you have built into this reed actually is keeping it from being stable for you. And it probably doesn't help you that this reed has a fairly big crack right down by the thread. Now, I never get panicky about a big crack like that. It is not a um, fatal flaw necessarily, but it is a strike. I would call that a strike against a reed. And as I put my plaque in here, Like, there's nothing really obviously wrong with this read, except that it feels too flabby. But when I checked your reads with my micrometer, I found that right in the middle of your heart, um, you have a real stable 50 millimeters, which is totally reasonable. And same on the other side, but you'll notice that between where the spine is and where the channel is, there's a real dramatic difference. It goes from nearly 50 to under 40. And so my overall hypothesis here is that the the effort you are making, which again, I agree is the right idea um, to lighten your heart by scraping the channels. I kind of think you've just gone a little bit too far um, and that I wonder if we can compensate by uh, adjusting the I wonder if we can compensate in the future by doing a little bit less 
strength in the spine, maybe a little bit of a U instead of a W at the base of the of the lay um, to help the reed to close down a little tiny bit more um, so that you can do a little bit less in the channels because that I think is what is causing your reeds to collapse and to feel a little bit, um, collapse is not the right word, but to sag and to feel a little saggy on top. In the immediate term, what I want to do with this reed to see if I can bring it back together for you. Um, and this is one of the one of the most finished reeds here. So I'm not promising that this is actually going to work, but my proposal would be um, to scrape over this crack because the concern we always have with a crack, I think, is that if the arc of the if the arc of the cane is supposed to look like this, when there's a crack, sometimes it looks like that a little bit more. It causes the curvature to stiffen and become like this, which certainly can be holding your reed open. So what I'm tempted to do, and this is an experiment on this reed. If I'd been smart, I would have started with a different one. Um, I would like to scrape over that crack to uh, eliminate its influence on the reed a little bit. I would like to open these windows a little bit more and like sacrifice a tiny bit of the spine here and then thin the sides and corners of the tip, which you have done a nice job of, but I'm gonna do more and clip and see if we can get this guy back into balance. I think that the fundamental problem is your thinness there and there, but I'm gonna to try to compensate. Um, as an, okay, as I do this, first of all, let me zoom a little so we can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take, that crack itself. This is the only time I'd ever let myself scrape right up the middle of the reed, right? And you notice that I've sort of bumped into the spine there, and I don't mind that. A Little bit more up here, and I'm just scraping a little into the middle of the windows. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more above the, above the heart. And there's not a lot to do because you've really cleaned this slope up very nicely. So you can see how little cane is actually coming off this. It's just tiny, tiny scrapes. Um, a little bit in the windows here as well. And then I'm going to re-soak that. All three of your reeds have a little tendency to leak high on the sides, um, like up in this kind of area. And uh, that's, again, not a totally fatal flaw, but we don't like it. Um, I do observe that they soak closed. When I, when I get them nice and wet, they will close themselves. But when they arrived here, they were all a little bit flared open at this area. And my hypothesis there is just the extreme tightness of your wind right at the top of the tube. You might, I don't even want to say do less, but I, you might slack off the tiniest bit up there so that the cane can relax and come in an organic manner right up off the, off the top of the tube. Definitely we've dropped the crow, so I'll clip. That was quite a substantial clip, maybe more than I intended, but listen. Basically, I'm trying to integrate a little bit more of the tip and the heart. Um, that's not right. I don't mean integrate, I mean integrate the vibrations. Um, and it felt before as though things were a little out of balance. If I go out the side of my mouth, we still hear that flatness, right? That, uh, um, that lack of control, that lack of holding itself up. And uh, 
And I'm not so confident on this read that I can do anything about it. Again, because I think our fundamental flaw is that the heart's gotten too thin. But I'm gonna go in again and see what I can do. More cut in at the gutter. More thinness at the side. And on the other side too. Definitely find that I'm regretting I started with this read. <laughs> Dropped the crow, clipping again. It's a low and flappy crow. Ooh, okay, but second time, lucky, I guess. This reed still has a nice, comfortable opening. This reed still responds really easily when I beep it, but it does feel like it's holding itself a little bit better uh, together up top. I don't feel like I'm fighting uh, the opening so much. I don't feel like I have to bite in the upper register to hold the pitch together. And I do feel like this, this uh, balance that I found was a pretty delicate one, right? The, the things that I actually did were uh, thinning the windows behind the heart to try to make the heart think it was thicker. And then I twice thinned the sides and corners of the tip and clipped back. Um, and it was just a matter of trying to get those three regions of the reed into balance with the thinness of the heart taken into consideration. Okay, let's take a look at another one of these. Here is your read number one which compared to read number three does not have as dramatic a crack down here is quite um <laughs> i think i want to measure is what i want to do inside your heart you're beautifully thick in the middle and substantially thin on the sides, just like before. But somehow this reed just has a beefier appearance. Ooh, look how nice and heavy you are in the heart there, perhaps even too heavy. Let's find out. The crow is quite low and the Opening of this reed really feels enormous, like it's it's holding itself very uh, strongly open. And to manage the response, right, I actually have to close it with my mouth. If I don't, I get... So for on this reed, for me, the openings feels like the main problem. And I can just feel with my fingers how strong that spine is. Um, I don't want to tell you that a spine, having a spine in your reed is a bad thing, right? Like, I'm not going to go out on that limb, but I will say that I think your the structure of the spine, the spine that goes all the way through the middle of the heart, and the strength of the rails here is, in general, holding this reed a little too uh, strongly open. And so what I'm going to do is take your very clear W down here. You see it? And scrape across it at the very base of that spine and turn that W into a U and see if that will help to collapse the reed the littlest bit. And then I will go back up, adjust sides and corners because I can see just visually that the left side of this tip is much lighter than the right side of the tip. Um, maybe on both sides. 
So first the windows, because I find the structure of this read a little overwhelming. Did I play it already? Did I play this for you? Let me do that quickly first. It's got a low crow. And there's a, a definite wildness to the sound, which I think is mostly caused by the tip that is a little too heavy. Didn't I say I was going to do the back first? I did, but I can't stop with this. Got to start with the sides and corners. Got to. I'll come back to it, though. I won't forget. Definitely on both blades, you had a ton of bulk on the right hand side of the tip and you had cleaned out the left side beautifully. That wasn't the case on your first read, I don't think. So just an observation. So immediately that the crow came down, but also organized itself a lot better. Now the W turning into a U. I'm basically just going stroke, 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 stroke across the bottom of that reed. And I'll do the same over here, but it's not, although it's not as pronounced on that side. And now I'm going to clip and we'll see if we're getting closer. I feel like I may have wandered out of frame on that last thing. Sorry about that. Now we've got a very, very easy beep that I can do with no lip pressure. And the crow was a little low, so I'm clipping one more time. Still flat crow, I'm gonna go one more. Feels a little risky, but I'm gonna try it. Now it's a C crow. but I feel like I've lost response a little bit. I've moved into a thicker part of the tip because I clipped a whole bunch of times just there. And so uh, now I'm just gonna go back into the tip and do the same thing again. Clean cut in at the gutter. Gently scrape up to the corner. Both sides. And it's still the case that the right side is a little on the heavier side. I'm being especially careful right at the top because of course that's the region that uh, used to be the middle of the tip, right? And I've clipped back. So suddenly what was the middle of the tip has become the tip of the tip and it's not used to being thin. now. It feels very easy to play, but I don't like the sound. There's a wildness uh, up top that feels scary to me. Let's see if we can see where that's coming from. The opening feels comfortable. But you know, what I haven't done on this read is I haven't taken this region at all, the region right behind the heart to help the heart think it's thicker. So I'm going to do that. And you've done such a beautiful job of smoothing this that I'm trying not to go, uh, yeah, I'm trying not to unsmooth it too much. There's not a ton of wood here. Hmm. It's definitely hard for me to get at that area that I want. Let's see.
I really like here on the upper blade the transition between the heart and the tip. I can really see the concave cut in between the heart and the tip. On this side, it's definitely messier. Let's see if we can find some focus here. Not quite as clean. And I want to say that separating the tip from the heart a little more here, it's what's going to give us our control. I almost see like a double rooftop here. And then it's very steep here. And that contrasts with the other side. I'm going to try to clean that up, especially the right side. And I know there's some like damage to the corner here. I'm not overly concerned. So I'm just cutting a little, I'm doing the scoop of the scoop and curl. And collecting. Now do I have the response I want? absolutely play this read. It feels light and as long as I'm holding on with my mouth it's okay but it's making me real nervous because as soon as I drop the support with my embouchure it really falls down. What happened between these two reads? Because eventually we got the other one down. Our measurements look similar. We're already down at 69 on this read, which I do not like. And as a reminder, you've got strength in the middle of the heart. and comparative weakness on the sides. And the strength in the heart seems like it should hold this reed together, but it is not doing so. I'm gonna separate the tip and the heart more and see if we can uh, get these guys back into balance because that's the only thing I can think of to do here. Okay, now I did a really dramatic cut in on both sides here. And if that didn't improve it, then I sort of feel like maybe you have stumped the chomps here. Yeah, I feel like I sort of hate this read. this read. I'm going to send you a replacement um, and try to experiment with matching what you need with out of my with my own reads because this guy is not working for me not one bit. <laughs> Finally, um, we've got this guy which actually feels terrific to me in contrast. Um, it's much heavier. 
the beep is okay, but the, the reed is holding itself closed so much better. And he's much longer than the other ones. Makes me think that he's uh, like a day one reed compared to a day two, or day two compared to day three. Um, this is a reed that doesn't feel like you've taken too far yet, and I welcome that. It almost but does not quite crow. It's quite long. I'm trying to figure out which side is the top and which side is the bottom. It's much um, more resistant, um, but also feels a lot more stable than the other ones. And I think partly that's the, the length of it is making it feel a lot more secure. Like here's our, here's our disastrous little purple reed that I just gave up on. And here's your beautiful blue and white day one reed or day two reed, which I like so much more. Um, and it's the length of the heart, which I know I'm the one who dropped the tip on this one. Um, and it's the beautiful length of the tip. And I think there's some thickness in this heart too, that I'm super excited about. And I say it, okay, there it is. We're about 51-ish, 50-ish at the spine of the heart. Similar to your others, but I just don't feel like you've gone as far in the sides yet. So I would like to treat this read as though it is your day one, day two read that you've just picked up that you want to finish and you don't want to turn all the way into one of those purple guys. First thing I see is that I want the slope within the tip to be a little bit more uh, smooth and consistent. So without doing a great deal here, I'm just going to sort of pet the kitty up to the corner. Definitely not touching the middle of the reed. Both sides. On this side, the cut-in is a lot more, um, it's less clear, so I'm just going to clarify it a little bit. Whew, and I found a big chunk of cane with my knife up here. I'm not ecstatic about the size of that chunk that came off, but clearly it needed to come. So what I've clearly done is dropped the crow here and made the response a lot more immediate, a lot more uh, easy. So I'm going to go ahead and clip a tiny bit. Brought my crow back up. So all I've done is tip and clip. This still feels a little bit more like uh, the response I like than the response that you seem to like. But what I love is how integrated the vibrations feel. Um, I tongue and then I get an immediate response. I get a comfortable cushion of resistance in here. Uh, and it feels generally really great. My instinct, if this were my read, would now be to smooth all the way across the heart. And my guess is that your instinct would be to take the channels a little bit instead. Um, I'm going to try my version here because we've already done yours and it only kind of worked out. So right across the heart, oh so gently, but thinking about making the whole surface an arc rather than thinking about sculpting uh, the spine and channels. Drop the crow a tiny bit, which means I can clip again.
Now that makes me a lot happier um, because I feel like if I let go with my mouth, it's not gonna go bonkers on me. A little bit maybe, but not nearly as much as the other ones. Remember our read number, it's technically your number two, but it's the first one I did. Right, if I give up with my mouth or if I try to push it down, it goes way below any kind of comfortable pitch floor. Um, but this one feels like it has a floor that it won't really fall beneath. Which means that when we go up high, it's much less easy for me to drop that pitch dramatically. All right, hi Julie, I'm popping back in to just answer a few of your questions real quick. You had asked if I could just maybe look at your blue and white read a little bit more and tweak it a little bit further. And so as I look at this on day, I don't know, I worked on it once, so for me it's day two. The read definitely feels a little bit more like a read of mine than like a read of yours. It has a, a certain amount of resistance and I know that that is not gonna work for you. So here is my thought. Um, I know you saw me scrape at it, you saw me clip it, and I'm definitely feeling with my mouth a little bit of extra thickness at the tip of the tip. So I'm gonna sort of go up there and pet the kitty. But the thing that I want you to notice, I know that I talk so much about trying to make that concave cut in, the, the um, skateboard ramp between the heart and the tip. But I want to say that for you, when your, uh, your priority is having the reed be easy enough to actually play, um, we might want to make that cut in be just the littlest bit harder, just the littlest bit stronger. So the tiniest bit less concave and the tiniest bit more, um, well, I don't mean convex, but I mean a little bit more of a, a wall or a curb than like a ramp. And I think that doing this the littlest bit um, should help the response. And if I've done that correctly, um, still emphasizing the thinness at the sides and corners, I don't think it should hurt our stability too much. Yeah, I feel like I don't even have to blow to make that work. And it's not uh, giving me a lot of sag or a lot of instability. Um, so all I did just now was I took off the very, very uh, tippity top, just the edge of thickness that was left when I clipped and clipped and clipped yesterday. And um, I took your cut in from being the skateboard ramp to being just a little bit more that. Um, and hopefully that makes sense, right? It's the heart here moving into the tip. And while of course there is still nuance here, right? This is the, the strength of that cut in down at the gutter, but toward the middle of the reed, toward the, toward the peak of the rooftop, I'm cutting in less strongly. Um, it might be more like hard, 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 little bit less and hard, 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 again. And that's, <laughs> this is the messiest diagram, but I just wanted to be clear about what I was doing there. Um, but the more, the more you do that kind of hard cut in right at the rooftop, um, the easier the response is going to be. And the, the, uh, not payoff, the opposite of payoff, the, the, the trade-off is in sound quality sometimes, in like connection between the tip and the heart in terms of just like having the overall read vibrating. But actually I think that, that 
what you want is a reed that has stability back here, plenty of stability in the heart and the and the windows, but basically functions from the tip because that's what you need in terms of the, the blowing that you're able to do, is my understanding. Um, and then you had also asked me to talk about the distinction between scraping in the channels of the heart and scraping in the uh, and scraping across the heart. So I'm going to quickly diagram it and then I'll show you on our read. Okay, um, uh, what am I doing? So if this is the, the center line, which is sometimes a visible spine, and is sometimes just like an implication of thickness in the middle, I wanna draw the distinction between uh, scraping very specifically this region of the reed, the, the channels here, versus scraping sort of all the way across. And my basic go-to is to scrape across. And my suspicion, honestly, is that the thinness in your in the channels of your heart may have come even while you were doing a long scrape, right? Um, and intentionally leaving spine and like scraping all the way through. And like if so, all I would suggest is backing off a little bit as you're doing the long part of your long scrape. Um, but if that's something that you're intentionally doing after the fact, like intentionally doing in your finishing process is scraping here and scraping here, instead I would say, let's experiment with doing more scraping that starts on the left and arcs across, just sort of crossing the reed, but with the idea that, ooh, I'm gonna draw it again. Okay, let's call this the, the arc of the, of the cane itself. So like you, could, you might be looking in the opening and seeing this. And now I want you to think about this as a cross section of the heart. I actually do, in my reads, want it to be thinnest here at the side. <laughs> and pretend that's symmetrical, um, thinnest at the side and thickest in the center, like so. Whereas if you're um, scraping in the channels, then you have thickness here, thickness here, and thickness here, and comparative thinness in these areas. Here I am doing it, just scraping from the left across, and I'm just, it's the heart, right? So I don't want to take too much, but I'm just sort of letting my knife dance across the middle, cutting it at the side, and then using very, very little pressure and just trying to smooth the heart all the way across. And in doing so, um, hopefully I'm dropping the crow, I'm allowing vibrations to move through the reed a little bit more, so on and so forth. This has been a reed repair shop episode. If you too would like to have your reeds uh, analyzed and worked on and studied by me. Uh, you can find information about that at my website, JanetIngle.com, which is also where you could order reeds or cane, and where you could reach out to me to ask me any questions that you had that you thought I might be able to cover on a future 5-Minute Reed Maker or Reed Repair Shop episode. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.